sicheren Punkte gemacht. Da jetzt der Defense gegen Scholz, der lässt ihn aber stehen. Wieder TJ Scholz. Gibt's doch nicht. Gibt's doch nicht, TJ Scholz. TJ Scholz mit Tempo, so wie wir es kennen. Scholz. Der Typ ist Wahnsinn. Dieses Tagging ab. Wir haben da schon ab und zu mal drüber gesprochen. Das kommen wir aber jetzt gar nicht dazu zu analysieren, weil es so schnell geht. Anspiel Shorts auf Kratzer. Shorts 1 gegen 1. TJ Shorts zur Mitte. Shorts der Flauter Shorts für zwei. Er ist schon jetzt der designierte MVP der Liga und er zeigt einmal mehr, wieso. We start off, this should be the MVP interview, so therefore, once again, congrats uh, on the MVP award and all the other awards you, uh, you guys uh, and titles and the whole organization is on a full vibe right now, so congrats to that. And thank Michael, you, thank you, thank you. And my question is, um, basically now, it has been award after award and a lot of shoulder padding and all that. Did you have the time to reflect on it already or are you like still dialed in? I mean, it's been a kind of a whirlwind these last couple of weeks. Uh, obviously, I'm super grateful for all the awards that have been given to me, us winning the championship uh, in the Champions League. We really, uh, to be completely honest, haven't even had the time to properly, I guess, celebrate uh, our accomplishments because we really had a quick turnaround. I mean, we won the championship on Sunday and we were back in the playoffs on Wednesday. So. You had kind of that that night in Spain to just you know enjoy for a little bit, but the, I mean the minute we got on the plane, everyone's focus had already flipped back to to Chemnitz and Crazy. getting ready for the playoffs. So, to be honest, we haven't had the proper time to uh, to celebrate and enjoy what we've done this year. But I think I would rather it that way than to to be uh, with our season done uh, early. So. Yeah, I, I would be a terrible, uh, a terrible teammate because I would have celebrated the hell out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, also the basketball Champions League title, insane, like crazy. Yeah. Like I, uh, the whole country was rooting for you. You know, it is. Uh, it became like you became for a short term. You became Macedonian, but also you've been a German national team player now for at least the Champions League title games. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I mean, we know there was a lot of support for us. Uh, obviously, the whole league was, you know, rooting for us to go get that championship. And I mean, the support that obviously Bond showed to us and then all, all the other people that were rooting us on. I mean, we got endless messages, just just a lot of support overall from the whole country of Germany rooting for us to to get that championship. And I was glad we were able to bring one home to the BBL, basically. Yeah, for sure, man. I was hyped. Um, we taken. It, a big uh, bit back in time, uh, obviously, uh, this is the MVP interview and uh, we uh, kind of want to reconstruct the way how we got here. So last season, you have a phenomenal season as well. And I think you tear your chest, your chest yes. muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe uh, take me through that recovery time um, and then uh, through the time of how does an off-season grind with TJ Schwartz look like? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, last year when I was playing with uh, the Crosslein uh, Merlins, uh, you know, I was having one of my, probably I would say my best season up until that point of just being confident as a basketball player and confident with my teammates, my coaches were confident in me and everything that I was able to do on the floor. And then obviously at the end of the season, I tore my chest and I basically tore the muscle that like connects your I think what the doctor said, it like connects your armpit to your like shoulder or something. So I basically had no motion in my shoulder because of the muscle that I tore. So it was a complete tear. And then um, I had the surgery out here in Germany. Shout out to the the doctors who took care of me. Germany's great guys. German yeah. doctors. <laughs> they, 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 the shout out to them who took care of me. They uh they patched me up real nice and um it, but it was a it was a long rehab process. I was uh, six months in an arm sling. I couldn't mm. move, had to basically be immobile from that one arm. Um, the, I guess you could say the benefit of it, it was my right arm. So it wasn't my left side, which was, there's always a blessing in, in, in an injury somewhere. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I went back home. Um, normally you have like around two and a half months uh, as a, I guess you say as an import to be at home. 
But uh, basically my whole time I was uh, rehabbing, I was doing two two times a day rehab, just trying to get my mobility, my strength, everything back to kind of the place I was before I got hurt. And mm -hmm. then in the last month of July, I was finally fully cleared to basically do basketball stuff, weightlifting, everything with like no restraints. So basically the last month uh, before I came out here to Bond, I was super locked in on just trying to get back to that level that I was competing at before uh, my injury. So it was it was a long process. There was definitely some ups and downs and just like, I, I guess the biggest thing you kind of learn is like patience and like yep. taking, I guess, that break that you you really need that your body is asking for. So that was the biggest thing I learned, but I was, you know, I'm grateful for that. And I don't know, it kind of trained my mind to just tap into a different kind of focus of uh, getting back to that level that I wanted to compete at. So July, so what you doing? Is it going to the gym, LA Fitness, killing some dudes out there? Or how do I have to imagine that? Uh, so I say a, a typical day for me in the month of July was, so I was 6 a.m. I was getting my lift in. Um, so I was I was an early guy. Uh, I like to get the lift out of the way. Um, and then after that, it was go back home, eat a little some, rest. And then I was doing... Uh, a 9 a.m. Uh, just a shooting workout, which is done in my high school. My high school coach, we're still in, in contact all these years. He, he allows me to get into the gym. They have a shooting gun where they allow me to just kind of get in there before they start their practice and, and do whatever I need to do. And then it was, again, lunch, uh, relax again. And then at nighttime, I was with my trainer. Uh, shout out Coach Mo. Uh, I've been with him for years now since I was in high school. But uh, nice. That was probably at like 8 p.m. Um, doing more of like a skill stuff, more of like a things I would see like in a game, basically. So in there is three workouts, the lift, wow. shooting and then the skills. And then the Saturday, Saturdays and Sundays where I was taking days off, um, I couldn't overdo it. But throughout the week, that's basically what my day looked like. And um, then you just find time to do other things in between that. But yeah, it was, it was a, it was a crazy schedule for me, but it was something that I needed to, like I said, get back to that level that I was competing yeah. at before. Exactly. So basically you, once you were cleared, you said, okay, yeah, it's fuck time it, to let's go. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, it's time less. to lock in. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then you obviously uh, come to one of the, you join one of the um, ex most exciting teams, even of last season, the Telecom Basket Spawn, and you kind of fill the shoes of the guard that has been before, um, also really explosive with uh, Pocket Jackson Cart, right? Um, and there is an existing core, but also you get put into a, like a leading role. How did that go through training camp? What kind of stuff did you had adapt to? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, first of all, shout out, you know, Parker Jackson Cartwright with things he was doing last year was crazy. Um, but coach really laid out um, kind of the foundation. And I saw, I guess, like you said, the core group that was already returning. And then I saw where I could kind of implement myself into that and help them be successful. Um, basically, from the first moment we got here in August, it was just a uh, really building that chemistry that I guess you guys see from the outside looking in. Yeah. And, and um, I feel like that's the biggest thing that kind of sets us apart from all the other teams that are, you know, trying to compete for a championship is the chemistry that we have. And I mean, it goes all the way in the locker room to just even outside the basketball court where we're getting lunch together, we're hanging out, doing kind of the coffee, anything really. Um, so that that whole building the chemistry trying to find your role as a, for me, it was as a leader on the court. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a long process of that preseason. Uh, we went to, I believe, Ragla, uh, Slovenia for our training camp. And okay. we're there, we're there building the relationships, getting to know each other, other people's tendencies, stuff like that. So just the, the I guess you could say the typical basketball things that you need to do to become a successful team. Uh, that's basically what my mindset was coming in, just finding out fine. everybody's personalities and, and things like that to then uh, translate that to the court. And yeah, I mean, it worked out. We got one championship, we're going for another. So it's, it's been great so far. Sweet. Then I, I was all, all obviously all over the basketball Champions League. I watched the press conference. I think 
you still should have um, drowned like Thomas Isolo with some water. I felt like I could really see his power position because they were hesitant. Like I was like, yeah. no, no, guys, do it. That's the moment. Uh, what happened there? <laughs> nah, so I mean, when we, um, we, so we've already got him a couple times this year. Okay, uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, when we qualify for the final four, um, okay, okay, we got him there, and and every time we kind of like this. Obviously, that was a moment that we really wanted to do it, but he, uh, I think he told us that he only had one suit on deck, <laughs> okay, so good. so we so we weren't able to really uh, drown him with the water. But we got him when we were here, and he also I I think only had one suit, but it was just kind of one of those moments where it was like, oh, we have to do it, but. Uh, Hopefully we could create another moment for that. But uh, yeah, that's just, that's kind of what happened in that situation out there in Spain. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but what I, what I also took from that press conference, you guys said, let's keep the main thing, the main thing. So you guys been extremely consistent uh, throughout uh, the season. What in that whole consistent like routine has maybe been the most challenging over the year? Yeah, I mean, he he preaches it all the time. Our coach talking about keeping the main thing, the main thing, like you just said. And uh, I mean, really, the the overall thing, it sounds very, I, I don't know, even the word to, I guess, cliche, but he always says, uh, just do the basics at a high level. And it sounds super easy, but uh, it's Kobe it's, said that too all the time. It's, it's Kobe not, said yeah. that too all the time. So it's, it's obviously it's not an easy thing, but when you focus on the basics that you've done every single month leading up to the playoffs and leading up to putting yourself in a position to win a championship, when you get to that, uh, that level and that, I guess that stage, uh, you'll be ready to compete. So that's, that's one thing he preaches. And, uh, I think everyone kind of takes that deep into their heart of like doing the basics at a super high level. And, um, We know when we do that, we'll put ourselves in a position to, I guess, be successful. Then, obviously, we talked about the routine. Uh, I read a couple of books about habits and stuff like that. So I would really like to know uh, if you could take us or me now um, through a morning routine of you heading into a normal day of practice till the moment you first time touch the ball on the court. Yeah. I, I okay as me, as detailed as you can give it to us yeah <laughs> I, I'll be as detailed as possible I'm kind of like a got to do everything the exact same uh like um, uh, in a routine or like yeah I guess the same routine. habits I don't know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so uh let's, see, let's so let's say it's a a Monday practice and we got just one today it's I guess we'll say it's 11 a.m practice yeah um I'm waking up at 9 a.m so I'm I guess you could say I'm kind of a late sleeper. I don't really like to wake up early. Uh, I wake up at 9 a.m., kind of lounge in bed till about 9.05, 9.10. Um, I wake up, get out of bed. First thing I do is turn on music. Depends my vibe. I might be chill music. I might be rap in the morning. I might be gospel music. It just depends how I'm feeling. Turn that on. Uh, I go and grab some breakfast. Normally it's like cereal, maybe a, a fruit i don't really like to eat much before practice um but something super light after that i am then brushing my teeth you know wash my face get get my my bag and everything packed get ready to go uh i ride with kt uh the captain i ride with him to practice every day uh that's just part of the routine uh we leave the house at 9 50. uh i get here at about 9 55 we don't live very far from the gym uh i get taped I'm still listening to music because when I get out of the car, actually rewind, when I get into the car, I plug my phone into the aux. I, I put the captain, you know, the he might he might hit, hate me for this, but the old head, I put him on some new school music. <laughs> And then when I get out of the car, I put my AirPods in walking into the gym. I'm still listening to music, sit on the table, get taped by our physio bow um, and then kind of chill in the locker room for a little bit. Uh, and then at about. 10 30 i i go out or it's like 10 20 I go out stretch a little bit get loose then i put my shots up with tyson ward who i've been shooting with this whole year we get our makes in from two from three and then by then it's time for film and at that point i'm locked in so it's, it's basically the same every single day though well done well done i think yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. one The good routine, like, like I think that's what most people, no matter which job, establish in their lives once yeah. they start making a career. 
So for, for me currently, that's my struggle. How do I structure my morning the same way? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, much appreciated. Um, and uh, there are some people in the chat. I still have some couple questions and then we will okay. take a look at the chat real quick. You play in uh, Europe now for a couple years. Um, if you could change one rule, uh, would, you, would you have one right away? Oh, if I could change one rule, I don't know. That's tough. I think maybe this is it's a topic of discussion, but maybe the only rule that's kind of different from the states to here that I would maybe questionable change is the timeout rule where, you know, you can't call like the players can't call the timeout when it's a live ball situation. Well, For example, like say you're down one and there's 10 seconds left and the opposing teams on the free throw line. If they miss the free throw, I feel like I should be able to call a timeout to them. Yep. Coach can organize something. But I mean, that's just the rules here where you kind of it's a live ball. You can't call that timeout. Or if you're like late game and you're in a you're getting trapped and they're trying to foul and you need to burn a timeout to then reset yourself. But I don't know. I, I'm kind of I agree on that rules now, but that's maybe the only one that I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I agree on that. And I would also add that if uh, the quarter is running down and you score a basket, that the time isn't running off, you know, like if there's seven oh, seconds, yeah. so that time stops in that frame. Stops. So you create, can kind of create uh, the highlight or the team can at least in these five seconds set something up, whereas players yeah. like you can go coast to coast, you know? So right, I think right. that, would, that, would be, that would be way better. That would definitely be interesting. Maybe we can get the BBL, you know, if I put this on this channel all over and over again, then step by step, and then keep, the keep other leagues are there. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, um, what is it? Reputation makes truth or something like that. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Style question. Is it the freshest jersey, hair, and shoes ever went to uh, went uh, together for you? With the blonde hair, the shirt. Do you think that's the freshest in your pro career? In my pro career, I definitely will say this is the the, the freshest combination I've had of uh, hair to gear to jersey. Just the whole, I don't know, the whole everything is, uh, I don't know, it's a vibe for me. Last year was close because I was I was rocking the, uh, the Dennis Schroeder gold patch. Mm. But uh, this year, my sister, she convinced me in the summer to go full blonde. She's a hairstylist. And... Uh, from that moment on, I was rocking with it. And then I, I said, I have to stick with it the whole season. It's clean. Got to give it to I you. It's clean. I and that. I, you know, I think I'm 29 now, turning 30. And I think if I ever go blonde, I got to do it now. I got to do it now. Never. You know, I go, like, I want to go to an Afrobeats festival in the summer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, that's the moment I, I have to oh, yeah, that, it off. That's the vibe for you sure. Know? That's like the vibe. a yellow, yellow shirt and, and then hit, hit the blonde up top. I think I got to go with it. Hey, if you don't like it, you could always go back black. That's the thing. 100%. 100%. We see you turning it up with your teammates, uh, hitting the gritty, keeping everyone up to date like uh, Carsten Tada needs to stay. Um, what's, the, what's the last song uh, you, have, you played? What's the last song on your phone? The last song I played? Lil Yachty Shoot Out the Roof. Uh, a little... Lil Yachty shoot out the roof. It's just like a hype song. Um, yeah, gets you going. Get, get me ready for practice. Hey, uh, I love it. I think that that's that's also was helping the team and some of our German players. You know, when they when you have the the main point guard get it going, you know, uh, they I feel like they they feel a little bit more free too. You know, I think that's oh, really important sure. about the the vibe of a basketball team. My opinion, for sure. I mean, you got to find that balance of like locking in being ready to play and then the other balance of like hey let's loosen up a little bit let's realize that you know we're playing a basketball game let's not be too uptight uh and just kind of be free and be loose about what you're about to do on the basketball court yeah for sure um obviously everyone in your team performed outstanding this season the the core was strong you're winning 32 out of 34 games um but could you still name a player uh, in the team that made a big leap throughout the season? You know, like where you saw, oh, well, when we were in preseason to now, man, he made great improvements. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, it's tough because when you look at our team, you might think it's it's this guy here, is it? But it's, it, I mean, it's a, it's the whole everybody, and this thing wouldn't work if one person was, you know, off and. 
I can speak on really every single player down the line of the improvements they've made since the, the first time we got here in August. Uh, I mean, if, if there's somebody I had to point out, it would definitely probably be my guy, Tyson Ward. Um, I think he's improved not only just as a basketball player, but just as a person. Um, he's really grown up. It's coming into himself. He's finding his way defensively, making it tough on basically every opponent that he matches up with. And then obviously with his length, his skill set, his ability to handle the ball, he shoots it. Um, so he's really coming into his own. And I guess you could say building that complete package that every basketball player is trying to build. But yeah, um, Tyson Ward is nice. Obviously he was here last year. He's here this yep. year now. And um, he's continued to grow and elevate his game to a new level. So, yeah. Nice. And there's obviously some players uh, at the roster spot, 11, 12, 13, 14, that we don't mm -hmm. uh, often get to mention, but this has to be a core group. Some of the young Germans, how do they, how do they fit in? How do they compete in practice? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Even the guys that are, like you say, at that 12, 13, 14 spot, uh, they're in practice and they're, they're giving their all every single time. I mean, our coach wouldn't allow them to be in the practice if it, if they weren't giving their all. So even our young players, like for example, Zach, um, who's maybe doesn't see the floor as much in the games right now, but he's locked in the same way as I'm locked in. So he's tough. His, I, yeah, he's, I see him playing. Sure, he's tough for sure. And if his number was called, I know he'd be ready to go just because of the way he competes in practice. So this, like I said, it's a whole unit. And I think we're all on the same page and we've all been moving on the same uh, uh, drum beat, basically. And yeah. um, I think that's one of the things that just makes us so successful. Okay, TJ, thanks for your time. Um, yes, sir. Have fun playing in this crazy environment in Bonn during the playoffs. Yes. Um, we all be watching. and. Um, Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for coming on the stream. And no um, we'll see where, where this team uh, is going to take you and you're going to take the team. Excited to, to watch some nice basketball. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Ciao.